What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know what goes another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topic, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? Hey guys, today is Wednesday, July 17th. Congratulations, you made it halfway through July. We are almost into August and Yes, that's what the date is. Keeping today's video nice, short, and sweet because I got some things I need to take care of, but very interesting nonetheless, starting with some updates from the last video we talked about. Starting with this one, uh, the Gaming Otter said, Cody Co. update, let's be real, something has to happen. Um, So far, it's only been, I believe, two or three days since D'Angelo Wallace dropped a video exposing uh, Cody Co. with his uh, relationships with uh, another YouTuber by the name of Tana Mongu. The allegations that he slept with her while she was 17 and he was 25. D'Angelo Wallace kind of went into more detail and showed some more proof with people with corroborating stories and Gabby Hanna. Looks really bad for the guy. Since then, there has been a few updates though. One of which happened to be Jarvis Johnson, my gang gang, man. Uh, the only nice YouTuber who also was in the commentary space. When D'Angelo Wallace was calling out like dick YouTubers in terms of people who cover these kinds of things, I don't think it was Jarvis. Jarvis is one of those type of big YouTubers, but he does fit in that space of YouTubers that kind of fit within the realm of Cody Co. You can think of him in the same list of people like him, uh, there's Drew Gooden, there's Danny Gonzalez, there's Curtis Connor, there's, there's a bunch of guys who kind of fit within that kind of YouTube realm, and girls as well who kind of fit within the realm of that type of commentary space thing. Anyway, Jarvis Johnson said these Cody Co allegations are serious and the actions described are disgusting. He needs to respond immediately, then showing the thumbnail here with uh, D'Angelo Wallace in his video, then saying it's absolutely necessary for us to listen to victims, period, platform or not, and regardless of their personal feelings towards them, we must treat claims like this seriously. Also, to respond to a number of DMs I've received, despite occupying similar genres online, I don't know Cody as a person outside of his content, and we never have and will never work together. So, for those of you guys who were wondering like, wow, man, I can't believe it. You know, we have Jarvis Johnson and he's in the same group as Cody Co. They must be friends or whatever. Like, no, that's not how YouTube works, okay? <laughs> Most YouTubers actually just don't hang out with other YouTubers. A lot of them are very antisocial. So, it's not not good to like assume that just because two YouTubers are similar, you know, that the means that they are best friends at the same time. So Jarvis saying like, no, I don't know Cody and I never will get to know Cody because this stuff is atrocious. So Charlie, aka Moist Critical, responded to the video as well, literally a day after D'Angelo Wallace dropped in saying this. Well, a lot of things, but this was one of the major clips. I'm going to go ahead and break down these numbers here because it seems like people are starting to struggle with math, like teriology starting to pop off with one times one equaling two and all that. I'm just going to go ahead and explain this. 17 is less than 18. Thus, that is below the age of consent and is a crime. And I already have seen comments on this situation about 17, who gives a f That's basically 18 anyway. And it's the same dog brain dead concerning mentality like your hard drive needs to be investigated type sh that we saw with Dr. Disrespect. I don't know how we've devolved so much where all of a sudden 17 is now something people try and justify. So like in this case right here, you'll have some drooling, stinky, bumbling morons in the comments saying how it's not a big deal because 17 shouldn't be an issue. You know, like age of consent over in this region is actually 16. So really, he waited till she was old. Like it's craziness. It's actually craziness. It is a crime. It is a minor. Still, it's bad. Like, I don't know why that needs to be explained all of a sudden. I think the part two here is, well, and I'm pretty sure Charlie probably touched on it, okay? But there was literally, literally testimony right here where Gabi Hanna said, yo, the homie that you're talking to that you're making out on the floor right now is 17. And Cody Co was like, oh, woo, phew, thanks so much. Appreciate it. I'm glad I didn't catch a case. And then man's directly went to go catch said case. It's almost like he got the confirmation that she was underage and was like, I'm in there. Like, <laughs> that's how bad it was, according to Gabi Hanna, okay? Those are the allegations. I'm not gonna say exactly what occurred. This is based on two people's testimonies, the, the victim themselves and Gabi Hanna, a third party, saying that they talked with Cody Cohen and said, you need to back off of her. She's too young for you, bro. And he said, no, she is not. And yes. And the last update, it looks like Drew Gooden, another really popular YouTuber who seems to be in the same space as Cody Co. I think they've made video together in the past. I don't know how much friends they are, but it looks like Drew Gooden actually unfollowed him on Instagram. So things are happening in the background in terms of updates. It's now getting talked about. People are disassociating. And my guess is as time goes by this week and next week, we will hear more and more people distancing themselves from Cody. That's what's probably going to happen. Before we get Cody's response, my guess is we're probably going to get responses 
from all of his closer friends first. We're probably going to get a tweet. We're probably going to get some, I don't know, maybe something on second channels or something like that. But this is not the end, okay? D'Angelo Wallace basically took something and blew it up to the point where now it's impossible to ignore. And I'll keep you guys updated as it comes. Also, an update. We got some more stuff that came out when it comes to the Trump shooting, okay? It looks like we're reaching the end of the news cycle here. But also the fact that Trump just nominated the VP. I think his name is Vance and there's memes coming out with him as well. I'll just show you guys really quickly some of the things you might have missed in between Monday and now. This one being wild, which was a visualization that reveals how Trump barely escaped death during the PA rally. Trump mentioned that he turned his head at the last moment to look at illegal immigration statistics that were on the big screen. So this man came this close essentially to <laughs> escaping death. As you can see right now, his head and his skull is in the gun range when you look at this video, this picture right now. And then when you play it, Take a look what happened. Boom, turned his, that's crazy, bro. Take a look what happened. Now I don't see the bullet going past the screen when they show that. Right there. So I don't see a bullet coming past him, but maybe it's too fast to capture on the camera. I don't know. Wow. That's crazy. Okay, so man just literally turned his head for a split second and he of uh, terrifying, bro. That close to death. Also, here's another meme for you as Donald Trump being uh, illustrated by Japanese animation as if he was a part of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure World with his uh, stand right here in the background saving him from said bullet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they even have the freaking Trump dance. Why does Trump dance like this, by the way? What is this? I think at the, the DNC, uh, the, not the DNC, the RNC, bro. Apparently, while they were playing it, before he even came up there, they did like one minute video of him just literally bobbing left and right. I don't... This Trump dance, it's actually pretty catchy. But yeah, they created a goddamn anime. This came out like literally a day afterwards, by the way, after the shot. People are really quick on the internet. Anyway, shooting aside, Donald Trump has nominated his VP. It is this guy by the name of JD Vance. And uh, people are already making fun of him, finding memes and old videos. <laughs> This one's been circulating like crazy, but uh, yeah, he's the U.S. Senator for Ohio, and uh, also uh, people were making fun of him, even the Republicans, because apparently there were statements, apparently where he was actually coming out being anti-Trump at some point, and then also apparently people were saying he's married to a brown woman, so... Woo, you already know what that means, right? If you're not married to like some some white woman out there living in Texas, you, mm, mm. <laughs> anyway, what is this commercial? Someone said I had to play this. Are you a racist? Do you hate Mexicans? The media calls us racist for wanting to build Trump's wall. They censor us, but it doesn't change the truth. Joe Biden's open border is killing Ohioans. Someone has said that this was a basically the boys, uh, literally one of the commercials that you would see in the boys play. And it got him saying, are you a racist? Do you hate Mexicans? <laughs> oh, my God, this is God. Life is is getting incredibly weird and I, I guess we're here for it right and then this damn are you a racist and you got people out here saying wait is he married to a brown <laughs> oh no in case you're wondering how the far right is taking the vans pick okay so as you guys can see like a lot of people already on the right over here making jabs at the fact that yeah he's he's married to someone that's not white and the last and final update from last video comes from this whole loud cow thing that's happened with boogie 2988 we've been talking about the situation about this guy on the top left who has basically been on this podcast with keemstar wings of redemption mediacore uh some ordinary gamers this whole concept about him and whether or not he has cancer or not if he's been lying about it he came on for the next episode after going ghost on twitter and basically confirmed the fact that there was no real diagnosis of him having cancer but i think the twist might be that he might be getting it in the future <laughs> so he might have lied about it but also it may be still coming in the future like that's just that sucks that's crazy. Imagine lying about cancer and then finding out that you you were now getting cancer. That's 
That's tough. That's tough cookies. Tom saying Porky Pig. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? That's all, folks. Porky298 has admitted in front of 15,000 people, Keemstar, some ordinary gamers, and Wings that his polycythemia Barrett diagnosis isn't on his medical portal. Fake cancer allegations are wrapping up. I could probably, we could probably get him the fucking so code. So Vera's not on there. Vera's not on the portal. I don't know, man. It's not. I can send you, you a bunch of stuff. It's I not. Four days ago, you were looking yeah, at it. Yeah, four days ago, you said you were looking at it. Like so I it's, told you, it's I spent the there. last year. Like I told you, I spent the last two years getting treated for it. I've been told by my doctor for the last it's two fine, years. It's fine, Boogie. Is, Just hey, admit it's not on the portal. It's not on there. I told okay, you this. I told thank you. you. I have to do the Dang. That's the confirmation, bro. It's... <laughs> Brother, uh, you're just just the, the truth will set you free. Just stop lying. I think this whole thing was wild too. I started watching Lao Cow just a little bit, but then I kind of cut off because he started kind of deflecting and talking about like destiny. And I was like, nah, man, come on, bro. We all know what we're here for. We'll talk about more about Destiny, by the way. But he was kind of like reprimanding Destiny as opposed to talking about the fact that, hey, bro, are you still lying about cancer or nah? But looks like eventually he's basically saying like, yeah, there's no diagnosis, okay? If you don't get a diagnosis from your doctor that doesn't say that, you, you know if you have cancer, okay? If, if you have cancer, your doctor say, I have to have a tough conversation with you. You have cancer. And then they will give you paperwork showing you what type of cancer. You, that's it. It's not maybe, it's yes or no. <laughs> it's very clear as day. And the fact that this man was hiding onto this life for so long. And then he started kind of lying on Twitter. He made this tweet saying, according to the internet, I lied about cancer. However, for the last two years, I've been treating the symptoms of that cancer, blood tests, medications, and so much more. We still have one test left to verify. Blah, 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 blah. My brother has seen it in the medical charts. My girlfriend and best have been present when the doctor spoke of it. We're now doing more tests. I was panicked when the doctor told me I had cancer two years ago. I've never done a GoFundMe. I've never asked my audience for money to treat this cancer. I never have and I never will and all of these other things that he's been saying and saying that he's sorry and mistakes and I'm genuinely sorry, etc, etc. And then literally the replies is filled with people being like, bro, here are all of the contradictions. Here's everything that you're saying that you didn't do and then here's an example of you doing it and then showing that you deleted the tweets or you deleted the video, you tried to delete the evidence. It just, it looks really, really bad for Boogie298. Like I said, whatever he says, whether it's true or false, it will all be false because he's just told too many lies and he's lost all of his credibility and is down the hole. So that's the update with Boogie2988. Uh, maybe he does have cancer now. We'll see. My guess is that he'll continue to be put on Loud Cow Live because uh, he is entertaining enough. People like poking fun of him enough for him to just be the center of attention and topics. Uh, just for money and clout. So he's got that going for him, I guess. And other news, Jack Black and Tenacious D, apparently their tour is canceled and it has to do with Trump. <laughs> this actually sucks. Jack Black actually made this uh, post here on Insta saying, I was blindsided by what was said at the show on Sunday. I would never condone hate speech or encourage political violence in any form. After much reflection, I no longer feel it is appropriate to continue the Tenacious D tour and all future creative plans are on hold. I am grateful to the fans for their support and under Understanding. If you want to know exactly what was said and what happened on the set of Tenacious D, I will tell you. Better yet, I will show you. Dang. He said, let's make a wish. And he said, don't miss Trump next time. Okay. <laughs> As for Gaz, the other half of Nation D said, the line I provided on stage Sunday night in Sydney was highly inappropriate, dangerous, and a terrible mistake. I don't condone violence of any kind in any form against anyone. What happened was a tragedy, and I'm incredibly sorry for my severe lack of judgment. I profoundly apologize to those I've let down and truly regret any pain I've caused. A lot of people joking with the concept of like Trump like almost getting shot, assassinating, like literally like centimeters away from death and people are joking like bro you, you should have hit him there's 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 so many memes there are like a list of people who would have like not missed the shot kind of situation right people are, are poking jokes but then there are some people who are actually like yeah i really wish trump died i really wish he got shot and there are people out here who are just like i wish this man got assassinated i wish his face blew up from a freaking bullet and I'm going to come out here and I'm going to say it to all of my millions of fans because I don't care. You know, supporting political violence is it's, it's one of those situations, right, where it's getting very extreme. It's becoming 
very clear on both sides of this whole political spectrum that there are some extremists on left and right who just don't care about like maybe the process of democracy but more so just about the result and however way you get there is going to be okay as long as the result is whatever they want that result to be there's there's a lot of things at play here there's a lot of feelings there's a lot of terrible i want to say circumstances and people's lives that are at threats okay you have the lgbt you have trans you have women you have a lot of people who feel like their lives are at stake so now people's lives are at stake so people are like okay well now trump's life's at stake as well this is a, a war a battle right and it's getting kind Kind of getting kind of messy it's getting kind of nasty and i'm just saying be safe on these streets because these streets again guys is especially these political streets seems to be getting really wild it's not safe out here it's, it really is not safe out here it's also not safe out on these streets when it comes to destiny <laughs> that's right the political streamer himself has been banned from kick he was reportedly banned for disrespecting the innocent firefighter who was killed during donald trump's rally if you guys don't know destiny he is a political commentator we've talked about him some of, he's been banned off twitch uh, he's been banned off a lot of different platforms and he says a lot of outrageous things he loves arguing and uh, he loves politics and he loves talking about that he's been saying a lot of controversial takes when it comes to every political spe spectrum in the world and like when it comes to palestine and israel and his take now recently on the firefighter that got shot during the trump rally he was basically saying like good I'm glad. Cool. Making fun of it. It was a joke for him that this guy had died, basically, you know, getting shot, trying to protect his wife and kids from a bullet. And now he is dead. And he's been making very, very, very fun of the fact that that was the case. So much, in fact, that uh, I think he actually got responded to by like Elon Musk. And I think Elon Musk might have demonetized him on Twitter already, like a day or two ago. And now he's getting banned on kick is absolutely wild okay the only way to get banned on kick is quite literally is to like kill somebody <laughs> or almost kill someone right this is the first time i think when it comes to kick someone getting banned or like you know like minors and stuff where someone just said something that was so controversial that has gotten deemed as hate speech apparently he is temporarily banned i don't know how long indefinitely banned but for his takes here when it comes to uh yeah the firefighter who passed away as disney was making his rounds on the internet saying some of the wildest takes that he can think of he also made an appearance here on pierce morgan show where yeah people said that he was getting cooked in this debate and uh, it's a five minute clip that we'll kind of go through really fast i haven't watched in its entirety but a lot of you guys said it was kind of important to watch through well, Piers morgan was pretty upset and a lot of people seem to be agreeing with Piers morgan when it comes to destiny who is usually the guy who debates people and, and just wins because he talks really fast and he he does a lot of gotcha moments right he sets you up and says ha gotcha you contradicted yourself i win and then you know like just clips it and people are like ha ha look at destiny he's the king kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like this time it backfired on him. You are, when you no, are Destiny, in a let me world to you. where conservatives can say anything. No, I'm not a conservative. They can have any conspiracy theory. I'm not a conservative. They can have any plot. They can do any of these things. And then, and then liberals are supposed right, Destiny, to sit here and be like, Destiny, oh my no. God, it's so tragic. No, Destiny, Absolutely not. Let me explain, Absolutely. Let me explain my position because I'm not a conservative. I'm not, I'm not on either side in your race, right? Here's what I think about what you did. You'd like to fire off, as you've done so far in this debate, about your fury at how disgusting Republicans are, how inhumane they are, how they never have any empathy, blah, 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 blah. And then you yourself actually are exactly the, the person that you're describing. You are inhuman. You are somebody who seems almost gleeful that a young firefighter with a family, with a wife and children, who he was protecting as he was shot dead, that he deserved what was coming to him because he went to a President Trump rally a man who was president of the United States until recently for four years and maybe again. You sound almost gleeful, Destin, and I'm sorry. That makes you, frankly, despicable. Dang, brother. He said, yo, look in the mirror. You're not being the change that you want to see kind of situation. Good Lord. It's, 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 uh, it's interesting because I feel like a lot of people when it comes to these debates and these fights of like him, them, her whatever it is these fights between these two factions it always ends up leading to be the case where the person on the farthest part of this side and usually the leaders end up just becoming the exact same thing they hate it's like as tale as old as time in terms of like movies and stories and shows that we become the fighter like eventually you just become the villain you live <laughs> 
<laughs> now, I'm not saying that Destiny is Batman. He's lived long enough to become the villain, right? But it's becoming one of those situations where it's like, if you look in the mirror, you might actually see the person that you're fighting just on the other side. It's And, and, and Destiny's going to respond to it, but that was what Pierce's take had he had to say so far. I don't think I'm gleeful about anything. I don't wow. think anybody should die. I don't think anybody deserves to die. But you want to talk about gleeful? Look at the conservative response to Pelosi's husband no, no. when they broke in. I can there answer that. mainstream media figures I can answer that, that. Were, I don't care. I can answer that. With all I, respect, think, I don't care what your let answer, me answer is. That. The reality is, is that conservatives have been turning the temperature up on the rhetoric. They have been making fun of these types of events for years. And now when something happens to them, now they're, they're looking for for uh, for sympathy from mm. the liberal side. Absolutely not. It's insane. Right. It's unhinged. Yeah, that you can the conduct problem. yourself. As so, so, I mean, again, not even going further to this. I think that what Destiny now is kind of doing like, uh, what do you call it? A whataboutism kind of situation where we're talking about you destiny right and that's the subject and then he starts saying well what about them you know they're doing the same thing on that side kind of thing which is like i think it might be <laughs> a fallacy kind of situation but like i think both things can also be like wrong like I, that's what it feels like to me so far is that yeah the things that happen with nancy pelosi and you have people conservatives on the reds who are being really terrible people when it comes to people almost dying or their husband very terrible right and it can also exist on the other side as well, terrible people, and I've said this to you guys many times, I don't like to get into this whole political stuff, but there are garbage doo-doo people on every single spectrum that you can imagine, okay? Every single group of people that you can think, there is an evil villain that exists amongst them. There is no true good faction, okay? There's not good groups of people, there are just good individuals. Every community you can think of, okay? The church, the government, the smash community, okay? Anything that has a group of people in there, there's some evil mofos just lurking around, okay? So I, I think here, this, this might be a little bit of what about ism from 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 him i don't know if this is the response it's about you and your reflection that seems to be also another version of you but just the other side of the the political force such a manner and, and here's the problem feel sorry when things happen why should why should anybody on the right listen to a word of your hectoring and lecturing about how they should behave and by the way for the record the mockery of nancy pelosi's husband when he was attacked by an intruder with a hammer was also despicable yeah. right i i can see despicable behavior on all sides, and I'm happy to call it out when I see it. You, however, right. want to present it's, yourself it's as this great kind of standard bearer of decency who sees outrageous behavior on the right time and again and is incensed by this disgusting, inhumane behavior. I'm, and yet I'm time sorry, and Donald, again, I'm, since the attempted assassination I'm, of Donald Trump, you have displayed exactly the same kind of inhumane behavior. F*** him about a, a fireman. Who is who is killed because he attends a rally of a guy yeah, he wants to vote with, for? My issue with the my issue with the MAGA kids is not that they are not empathetic. My issue is that they support a president that led an insurrection against the United States. I'm not here to tone police over their empathy. 80 I'm million just people voted for, for empathy, Donald Trump last time just, around. That's great. 80 million people voted for a guy that tried to insurrect the government, mm. and it looks like they might try to do it again. I mean, like I don't know what you want me to say. That's these are the facts on the ground. Um, the idea that so these you don't like you don't like attacks on you don't like attacks on democracy. So presumably you would unreservedly condemn the attempted assassination of Donald Trump because that's one of the most egregious attacks on American democracy. So wait, is is Destiny saying that uh, because of the insurrection situation that Donald Trump led January 6th, which could have led two people's lives being taken. I, I think when it did occur, there wasn't anybody in the office. Nobody actually died. No one got hurt. I think actually one of the writers got shot in the face. I think that was kind of the only casualty. But um, saying that, yeah, Trump was basically in charge of doing this. Therefore, if there's somebody else trying to kill Trump, then this is all fair game. I'm trying to understand the, the argument here, though. But I, the, the, the insurrection is kind of interesting right because there's a couple of takes on it there's some people who are clearly like yes this was an insurrection okay donald trump did try to overthrow the government in real time and other people are like no this wasn't donald trump's fault okay he was not a part of this he did not have a plan on it and uh yeah those are the two sides on there either he, he did try to do it or he didn't kind of situation so Piers Morgan, well, he's bringing that up. Piers not actually responding to that situation is talking still more about what's happening currently. Presumably, I don't think that anybody you will take this opportunity, to, given you yeah, are so anybody... determined to protect the integrity of democracy, democracy, you would find it absolutely outrageous that someone has tried to assassinate a president, right? 
Yeah. If, if the other conservatives on this show want to say that it was absolutely outrageous no, that Donald you. Trump to coup the government, I'm asking then, you. then maybe then I would. Yeah, no, I'm not going to get on my knees and, and, and beg for uh, forgiveness or, or show sympathy I'm to conservatives. You to, I'm have not none. asking for that. I'm asking you to condemn what happened as an egregious attack on, a, on democracy. Can you do that? No, I won't. No, I won't. I won't. You can't do that. You see, not so why the hell, absolutely frankly, not. Destiny, absolutely not. why absolutely the hell not. should we absolutely listen not. to a not. word you have to say Wait, about... Wait, why do you think conservatives haven't been listening to a word that liberals have said about anything for eight years? Right, what do you but think why is should change? they? You think liberals come out Destiny. now and they go, oh my God, this was so horrible. But here's my go, point. Wow, that is true. Charlie, I'll bring you in at the end of this, I promise you, and you'll get a good chance to respond. But here's my problem, Destiny, with your whole position on this, right, is that you don't actually have anything inside you that you want the other side to have. You don't have any of the empathy. You don't have any yes. sympathy. You don't care that someone tried to assassinate Donald Trump. You don't care that a young fireman you with a family was killed in the process. That. You don't you actually, you, you are not the person you want these other, other people to be. And all you do is play what a battery with every question I give you. And I'm just startled. Well, not, some... What about it? We're talking about Donald Trump. We're talking about the temperature of this country. But here's a question for the two panelists. What percentage of this event happening was due to Donald Trump's rhetoric? What do they think the answer to that question is? What percentage could it be that, that the other side, Very as little. we've just heard from Dave Rubin, has spent eight years calling Donald Trump the new Adolf a person who was responsible for the murder of 12 million people, including 6 million Jewish people in a Holocaust. Last time I checked, Donald Trump hasn't murdered 12 million people. So much as you would like him to be the new he's not. But again, to an impressionable young deranged mind who has easy access to guns, that can be easily interpreted as an existential threat, said President Biden. Somebody that needs to be put in the bullseye, said Biden. Okay, Only I'm last curious. week. I'm and guess what? what? Woo! Good Lord. Okay, it's been a while since I've seen clips of Destiny kind of getting cooked, uh, but get got cooked. I don't know the rest of the debate. This debate was much longer than just five minutes, so he might have been cooking around there. But yeah, Piers Morgan kind of trying to put Destiny in his place and saying, like, look, you're here, you're arguing. Why should people listen to you when you're not trying to be the example of what it is that you want to see? You're just quite literally a reflection of the people that you hate. And uh, Destiny might be thinking, maybe I don't want to be that. You know, I, I mean, that's just not my role. My role is not here is not to be the change that I want to see. My role here is to just combat and fight against the other side. And sometimes it's like those those animes, right? If you want to <laughs> fight fire with fire, right? If someone goes low, you go lower kind of situation. So it basically sounds like he's saying like if, if, if Trump, Donald Trump wants to do an insurrection and if someone else wants to basically murk him. It is what it is kind of situation. I'm going to look the other way and I'm not going to condemn it. It feels like it's the energy that um, he is giving when it comes to this take. But yeah, uh, after all of this, he got banned from kick and that's destiny right now. And he's been fluttering around on the Internet when people either hate him and or love it, because that's what happens when you have very extreme political points is you, you get hates and you get loves. So, yeah. All right, let's wrap up today's video with some things that you really need to know. Starting here, uh, ADCM Connor has said proof news recently released an article and tool that reveals what YouTube videos were used to train Sleuther AI, an AI used by Anthropic, NVIDIA, Apple, and Salesforce YouTubers are not happy. And uh, this is Salty Dan right here, my gang, who said, I just learned that Apple and other companies use one of my videos without my consent to train their AI, and I'm effing pissed. Uh, Eleuther AI took the transcript of my old canceling myself video, plus 173,000 other YouTube videos to help train their model without permission. And guys, this sounds like a good old fashioned law suit. I hope at least because one of my videos got taken as well. That's right. Mm, mm, mm. Give me that money. Let's freaking go. Apparently it got happened to MKBHD. PewDiePie got hit. Uh, Jacksepticeye got hit. Like a bunch of famous YouTubers, whether it was their title or the transcripts, got used. An AI came in, took it without their permission, and fed it into their algorithms. And now I am a victim. Screw PewDiePie. Me. I am the victim and I need Better Call Saul right now to do a class action lawsuit so I can have two million dollars <laughs> in my pocket right now. No, no, no. This is freaking NVIDIA was involved. I want 20 million, 20 million and 20s, 20 million and 10s. 
and 10 million and five. Salty Dan saying it's completely messed up. Thankfully, it's just transcript, but even so, it sets a dangerous precedent. Many of the content that was joined were video essays by creators that took a lot of time to make, and to see them just fed into an AI model without consent is disgusting. And here is the article that just came out. The search function for what videos were used is embedded into the article if you want to search for your favorite creators and inform them that they were ripped for AI, which you guys did for me. You came to let me know. I think it was like one or two of my videos got ripped for AI. Thanks for letting me know because I am definitely getting in on this lawsuit. We get to sue. Who, we get to sue Apple too. Who are we suing? It's it's, it's uh, Apple and Nvidia. Mm? That's some money. Okay, not twenty million. Give me two hundred million. <laughs> Let's go for the jugular, guys. This Proof News article here written by Annie uh, Gilbertson and Alec Reznor saying that AI companies are generally secretive about their sources of training data, but an investigation by Proof News found some of the wealthiest AI companies in the world have used material from thousands of YouTube videos to train AI. Companies did so despite YouTube's rules against harvesting materials from the platform without permission. Our investigation found that subtitles for 173,000 YouTube videos siphoned from more than 48,000 channels were used by Silicon Valley heavyweights including Anthropic, NVIDIA, Apple, and Salesforce. The data set called YouTube Cytos contains video transcripts from educational and online learning channels like Khan Academy, MIT, and Harvard. The Wall Street Journal, NPR, and the BBC also had their videos used to train AI, as did The Late Show with Stephen Colbert last week with John Oliver and Jimmy Kimmel Live. Proof News also found material from YouTube megastars including Mr. Beast, Marquise Brown Lee, Jack Septic, 377 videos, good lord, PewDiePie with also 330 37 videos and some of the material used to train AI also promoted conspiracies such as the flat earth theory. Now to nobody's surprise, okay, yes, people are stealing people's information and their data, their titles, everything using AI. I don't think anyone didn't see this happening. It's just a matter of people got caught doing it. We know that AI is trying to replace humans, okay? We know that chat GPT is taking over and they're trying to basically reduce the labor of actually having humans and steal. We, we know that this is something that's happening and people are doing it illegally left and right but it looks like someone actually got called out and caught and i my friend this this today's topic is about me i am a victim and i need representation okay i'm going to hit up mkbhd and uh, pewdiepie i'm gonna hit them all up and let them know what's up guys i am one of you i'm here in this class action lawsuit i have been stolen from okay my genius and my ingenuity has been taken without my permission <laughs> <laughs> and it's time to get paid. I'm not joking. I'm I'm not joking. Okay. This is Apple and NVIDIA. NVIDIA, these are the biggest companies in the freaking world. Okay. On the NASDAQ. All right. I'm in on whatever lawsuit that is going to be pending because yeah, just give me the money, bro. Don't be stealing from people. That's kind of wild. It's just bad in general. Jokes aside, okay, this is the kind of energy that we need to be kind of killing because otherwise they're going to kill us, okay? You're going to have these bots that have been built by people like me and people that you know, and you're like, wow, this is great chat GPT. They have great responses for everything. They can do, yes, because it's built on stealing from millions of other people who are now going to be kind of almost useless because they've gobbled up their information and their likeness to, to kind of push it out and spit it into their own. Mark Roll said, you've been watching any anime from this season, Omni, and uh, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have I been watching that I've been enjoying so far? There's one anime that I've been enjoying about this guy who's like 32 years old who becomes like trained. It's, it's literally called, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an old person. The name of the anime is one of those weird titles, right? Where it's like a super long paragraph. It's like got trained by an invincible group of people and now I'm invincible, but got trained by overpowered people. It's about this dude who's 32 who joined the game of like fighting against monsters really late in the game. Then he got trained by like these OP people and he became like literally invincible. It's, it's pretty funny. I like that one so far. I'm also watching Tower of God uh, season two. Oh man, I watched Tower of God season one recently, okay? For the first time, apparently it came out in 2020. Woo! That was crazy, okay? I, I When I was first watching, I thought this was kind of like a mid show, like the first five episodes. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. It's just some boy who's really, I'm not, no spoilers, right? But I was like, I, I've seen this trope a billion times. But then like around halfway around the season, it just goes from zero to like, a billion right the, the, i was just like watching i was like wait a minute is this the same anime every episode kept escalating and i was like what in the world and then and you start realizing that the, the show that you was watching it wasn't the show that was actually it was started getting convoluted i started getting uh remnants of freaking uh evangelion in terms of like how psychological it was starting to become and i'm telling you i was watching this 
And I was like, this the other half of Tower of God is not the first half of Tower of God. It's a completely different freaking anime. It freaking blew my freaking mind. So I loved Tower of God. And season two just started, so I'm getting onto there as well. Otherwise, is there anything? Kaiju number eight. I finally started Kaiju number eight. Got through the first episode. Looks brilliant. I'm excited to continue going through that. And that's it. So those are some of the couple of animes that I'm about to jump on to uh, for the summer animes that I'm looking forward to watching. And all right, guys, that's all I have for today's episode. If you made it to the end, drop a like, subscribe if you guys haven't already. I love y'all. I hit you guys with a video. If not, tomorrow on Friday as well, same time as around, usually around five o'clock, six o'clock Eastern, yada, yada, yada. I love y'all. I got to get out of here i got some stuff to take care of all right stay safe on the streets stay straight stay safe because i'm not talking english anymore because i'm talking too fast <laughs> don't make fun of me <laughs> all right i love you guys y'all take it easy peace